What is the fundamental duty of a lawyer? It is our duty to protect the rule of law. That he will stand up for every violation of the law. He will stand up for every citizen of this country who violates the law. He will stand up for the values of the constitution. He will stand up to the court. If the court does not recognize the values that we have cherished over the years. That is the fundamental duty of a lawyer. Mr. Chairman, members of the election committee and the family of my fraternity. It was in 1973, I remember, when I entered the portals of this court. A young man with no senior. A young man who had no client. So if some people feel that I don't understand what young men go through, I think they should think twice. With the dint of our hard work, we came up the ladder. And remember, the only way to rise anywhere is step by step, not through an elevator. And this is what is happening in this country today. What is the fundamental duty of a lawyer? Why are we here? We are here because it is our duty to protect the rule of law, to protect the constitution as has been given to us by our forefathers. And what does that involve? Involves that I recognize each one of you, not by your affiliation, political or otherwise, but the black coat that you wear. That's the only symbol of a lawyer. What does black mean? That he will stand up for every violation of the law. He'll stand up for every citizen of this country who violates the law. He'll stand up for the values of the constitution. He'll stand up to the court if the court does not recognize the values that we have cherished over the years. That is the fundamental duty of a lawyer. And I would like each one of you to realize that we're not here to make money. We do a lot of pro bono work. We do it for one reason, that we know that somebody else will not represent these poor, these indigent, these marginalized people. It is our duty to bear there and defend them, no matter what the consequences. I have done it all my life. I've been here for 50 years. And I've been president of the bar on three separate occasions, 1995, 1997, and 2001, 2002. I don't desire anything from this office except to serve you. What do I need this office for? To make money? No. Why have I come after 21 years? Because I see the degradation that I see with my own eyes. I see the manner in which my legal fraternity is being treated. I see that the registry does it what it wants. And remember, I am what belong to that family that were refugees from Lahore. We lived in two rooms, the entire family. So we don't belong to any elite class. We're not part of the elite. We don't want to be the elite. We are here to serve the people of this country. And I tell you, not the people who are rich, but the people who have no representation anywhere in this country. We shall continue to do that. And remember, I may be, at the moment, of course, I'm not affiliated to any political party. But when I was president of the bar on three separate occasions, you ask anybody in this court who was practiced at that time, did I ever, ever, even once in my lifetime talk about politics in the courtroom? Never. Because I don't believe that politics, it should be kept outside the courtroom, not within the courtroom. But the fact of the matter is that people say that I want you to be accessible. Well, I want to ask you just one question. If for three times I was the president of the bar, is it because I was not accessible? That could not reach me? 
For the last 50 years, and I can tell you this, give me one example of any member of the bar in the last 50 years who has ever come to me and I have closed the door. Not one. You can ask anybody. You can even ask the politician. When I was minister of a particular party, did I ever not do the work of a politician that did not belong to my party? Because I don't believe in it. I believe in the fact that we are all together. Why? For this nation, not for the post, for this country, for to take it forward, to make it the country that we want. But when I see the values that are being denigrated, Your time and, is over. Okay, that's two things, two things. People talk about medical insurance, and I can tell you that can happen. But it can happen through corporate responsibility. When you go to the CSR and tell the corporate sector that I want you to allocate five crores, and we have a lot of those clients, right? We can actually collect about 50 to 100 crores, and we don't need anybody else. We don't need anybody. And welfare of the organization, it is my commitment to you that without welfare of this organization at all levels, for them to represent in the manner that they want, I am going to do my best and I can tell you, you can walk in anytime, anywhere, at any time, and I will always be there for you. Thank you very much.